Okay, let's start. Uh, good morning and good uh, evening to all, and welcome to the Data Driven Community Virtual Meeting. My name is Ronan Arielli, and uh, I'm honored to host this meeting today. A few words about the, us, about the community. The Data Driven Community manages two branches. One is a weekly meeting of the cloud data driven user group like today. And the second one is an annual conference called Future Data Driven Summit. Next week uh, on uh, September 7, we will host Josefina Bash and uh, we will discuss on a uh, migrate SQL server uh, to Azure managed instance. Uh, or uh, if using uh, Josephina Word without getting a uh, migraine. The Future Data Driven uh, Summit 2023 uh, will be held on September 27. You are welcome to scan the QR code if you are fast enough, or uh, we'll publish the uh, recording and the presentation after the meeting. Search. Future Data Driven Summit, it's a must go conference. Uh, this year it's uh, going to be much bigger than uh, previously years. Uh, we have five tracks in parallel, uh, 10 hours uh, of sessions with uh, 53 speakers. The registration is open, as I mentioned, and I will add a link in the chat after we will start the uh, lecture of today. Uh, before we start, uh, can you confirm that you can uh, see that uh, this is recording? Can you see the red uh, light? I hope. Uh, you are asking if it, yes, it is. It is being recorded, I could see the red light, yeah. So as you can understand, all this meeting is recording and we will uh, publish the recording after the session. Uh, during the session, please use the chat uh, for questions and not only questions, but discussions as well. Uh, you are also welcome to use reaction uh, to show that uh, you like something. You can use clap hand uh, virtually or uh, mark uh, love for something. It does not bother the presenter, so use it freely. It's uh, just a small icon that will move on the screen and everyone can see it. Uh, with that, uh, to, uh, let's move for today uh, to today's uh, session. Today we are hosting uh, Tayob Ali. Tayob is Microsoft Data Platform MVP. He is a database uh, solution manager. And uh, Taub, uh, you, you are welcome to share your screen and uh, take the control. Maybe start with uh, some word about yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me know if you can see my screen. You cannot? Not yet. Okay, try again. Okay, it's uh, now we can see it. Okay, great, great. So thank you very much for hosting and uh, thanks to other organizers who run this awesome, uh, you know, two events. I know the big conference is coming. I'll be speaking and I'm also looking forward uh, to listen to some awesome sessions. And I encourage everyone to check this out, right? Uh, you guys have great lineup. Uh, every week, great speakers and great sessions. So I have about 53 minutes. I'm going to get going. And um, I do not have any slides. So those of you joined, I appreciate you joining, especially those who are in East Coast um, and West Coast. I know this is a business hour. It's not easy to take time out of your busy day. I do appreciate that. Hopefully it's uh, some use to your time. And like uh, Ronan said, uh, the chat is open. I'm also monitoring it. So uh, we are a pretty small group here. So uh, it is okay to deviate from what I prepared. I will be absolutely fine to get into discussions, comments, 
uh, and get a little bit off topic, that's fine. Uh, but I'll be finishing sharp at one o'clock. So if you have a few further meeting and if you need to go, so you can go. But I will stay here after 1 p.m. if someone wants to continue the discussion or have, have any questions. Uh, so the tool that you see on the screen is called Azure Data Studio. It's uh, Microsoft's open source uh, tool that uh, you can use uh, in uh, different platforms, Windows, Linux. Um, and the advantage of this that you can also write something called notebook. Uh, and notebook has different kernel. I'm using the SQL notebook here, uh, but you can also use PowerShell, Custo, Python uh, uh, kernels. I'm not going to talk about it anymore, uh, but I will be using SQL Server 2022, CU 7 for all my demo. And uh, you will be using a little bit of PowerShell. Um, and uh, yeah. So I'm not going to read the abstract, and I know Ronan asked me to talk about me. Uh, I already skipped that part too, uh, but I want you to take a note of my uh, contacts, which I'm going to put in the chat. So after this meeting is over, if you have any question, comments, you want to follow up, uh, uh, you can contact me in any of these four ways. I monitor all this, and I'll definitely uh, answer you within you know two or three days, if not earlier. Um, so let's let's and I'll probably talk for about maximum 10, 15 minutes, and then the rest, the whole thing is going to be demo. Uh, I don't want to talk much because people pretty much know what's the backup and restore. Uh, but it's still, you know, I put some reasons here that why why should we be talking about backup uh, and restore, right? Well, what's the purpose? Uh, and so I have a list here. I'm not going to read this, but if you can think of something else other than what I listed here, please put it in the chat. Uh, so I can probably add it here because this talk, this is the first time I'm giving actually this topic, brand new talk. Uh, I haven't presented this to anyone else before today. Uh, so, you know, I, I put some reasons. If you know something else you can think of, uh, put it there. Uh, I think as a database is steward, you know, um, and when I say steward, I'm trying to encompass, you know, uh, if you are an administrator, engineer, uh, data engineer, DevOps, whatever you call database operations, uh, all this kind of cover into this, right? One of our primary responsibility is that whenever a transaction is committed into the database, uh, we do not lose that transaction, right? So Sharon said ransomware attack, yeah. So you know, I kind of take that into a uh, high availability and disaster recovery under that belt, right? But that's a very valid point nowadays, right? A ransomware means, you know, it's not available. How do you recover, right? Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a hot topic. You see it in the news every day. I totally agree with you. So, you know, but all of this comes back to a committed transaction cannot be lost, right? Once a user application, whatever you call this, get the acknowledgement back from database, we should be absolutely confident that that is preserved. Now, yes, to recover that, you might you know, need longer time, depending on the, uh, the, the question uh, is, you know, I said, if someone can think of any other reason why you should take backup other than the one you see in the screen, put it in the chat. Uh, and Sheryl said, you know, that's the more attack. Sheryl, you know, just adding another point. And I said that's kind of cover under HADR on my last point. And some people might not even agree with me that if H backup is a HADR solution, uh, you know, people might have different opinion if you talk to 100 people. Uh, in my view, yes, it can be a solution. Like I have apps uh, that we are running into Azure SQL Pass service uh, that we do not do anything other than uh, backups. Why? Because the application owners are confident that they can reconstruct that those data, maybe from a different source, from a flat file, from a parquet file, whatever it is, and they can recover within the uh, SLA that whatever it is. So they don't want to spend any more money to set up availability groups or you know to replicate to a different region. Uh, so that's absolutely fine if that's what you need. Uh, now, another thing I must you know mention to all of you is. This is not, and this is my opinion, and I have very strong opinion on this. 
um, and you might have a different view, and you know, I respect that. We are not the one to decide RPO-RTO. We should not be deciding the frequency of backup. We should implement that. So our job is to sit down with the application owners, system owners, business owners, whatever you call in your company, and your high availability disaster recovery person, you know, who is looking after the whole thing in a company. Um, and, you know, I'm not putting a title because it can depend on your bigger or smaller company. You should sit down with them, discuss with them what is the requirement. All of you should agree. Then you should come up with a plan and present it to them with a cost. Say, so, okay, you need to be, you know, your RPO RTO is X number of minutes. For this, I have these two options. This one is going to cost X dollar. This one is going to cost X point two dollar. What do you want, right? And then you, you know, you implement that. But we should not be the first one to go and tell them, hey, I just want to take a transaction log backup every 15 minutes. Or I want to take it every five minutes. I don't want to take any differential backups. I just want to take full backups every night. Or I want to take a full uh, you know, weekend, take differential every night, or take differential every six hours, right? You can give different options with your reasoning, but first thing is someone else should tell us what is the requirement, and we should sit together, agree on it, document it, and then you implement it. Um, just if you're new to this business, just as a side note, uh, there are fixed database server role, as there is fixed server role and database role. So I listed those who can uh, take database backups. You need to be a member of these roles in order for you to take a database backup. But most likely you are going to uh, you know, set this up on a scheduler um, and uh, probably some service account is going to do that. But the service account or whatever account you put uh, has to have, you know, uh, be a member of these roles or have the similar permission. Uh, I talked about, you know, uh, backup and recovery strategies. So like business requirement, data availability, data loss, and the cost, right? Um, um, you know, a few years before, uh, people wouldn't talk about cost because people just assume everything is either on-premise and data center, hardware is paid off, uh, and storage is paid off for next so many years. So it's a fixed cost, but it's, that's not true anymore. If you're in a hybrid environment or you're in Azure, you should always talk about cost, right? Unless you control these things, your cost is going to go, uh, you know, very high. So whenever you produce a solution nowadays, especially if it's involved Azure services, you should go and give them the options, right? What do you want? what kind of storage they want, how fast they want, how many copies they want, where they want to replicate this, what you get by default, what you need extra and all that, right? And the retention also you should talk about, like in Azure, um, you know, you have long-term retention, you have short-term retention, uh, you should talk about all those. So these are a couple of things that you should uh, think about. Uh, and then once you get the requirement, then, you know, comes to our expertise, right? How do you meet the requirement? So now the business owner gave you these are my requirements, you go and implement it. So now you know a lot about backup, but you should also think about something else, right? And I listed those, I'm not going to read all those. Uh, it's just some, you know, something to think about, especially if you are, uh, you know, new or, 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 you know, relatively new into this, that you have to come up with a whole strategy. So, uh, and, you know, if you, uh, once I share this, if you can think of something else that I haven't added here, send it back to me, uh, give me some feedback and I'll add those uh, to here. Um, and, you know, some of the stuff I wrote, you know, depending on what size company you are working on, like the physical security, where your tapes, if you have tapes off-site, uh, you know, where they are restoring it, what's the reputation of that company, uh, what are they doing, you know, some of this might land in your area if you're in a smaller uh, company, if you're in a bigger company, uh, some of these might not, you know, land in your area, but, uh, you know, you should discuss this with, you know, whoever is uh, is, is taking care of those. Uh, I hope, you know, uh, formatting is a little bit off, so I'm going to fix that here. I see some gap here, and then it did not. Okay. Uh, before we can talk about backup, you need to know what is the recovery model of your database that you want to backup, because that will dictate some of the aspect of your backup and restore. What do I mean by that? If I'm in a simple recovery model, I cannot take a transaction log backup. Transaction logs get automatically truncated compared to 
full and bulk load recovery model. So what does that mean in terms of recovery or restore? Means between my two differential or full backup, if I'm not taking differential, if someone come and ask me, recover me that this database between a, a time between the two full or differential backup, you cannot do that, right? So that is where we need to sit down with the business owners and explain them, right? If they want to keep the database in simple recovery for some different reason. Uh, you cannot deploy some of the solutions that Microsoft has for HADR or offload your um, read-only uh, traffic, um, like log shipping, always on database uh, mirroring. You cannot implement those unless you are using a uh, full recovery model. Uh, in the full recovery model, you can pretty much recover to any point of time, as long as you can take the tail log backup, which we'll talk a little bit more between the two transaction log backup. Yes, if you cannot take the tail log backup, depending on what kind of disaster or what kind of incident, yes, there is a possibility of losing some data. You know, that's again, depending on how frequently you're taking T log backup, right? So you have to absolutely make sure you tell your business partners that if I'm taking transactional backup or if your requirement is this, it's just not possible if we cannot take a tail log backup in case, um, you know, if transaction log uh, file is not intact or if we lose it or something, right? And there are some custom solutions that I even uh, used in my career. Uh, you know, I was a steward for a healthcare company uh, and we used to literally uh, replicate block level replication for our transaction log. Uh, backup uh, for transaction log file to a secondary storage for this reason with different data center. But it also has some other implication, right? Uh, uh, of your, uh, you know, how quickly you can get your acknowledgement back when you are submitting, submitting a transaction. So there are some, you know, some solutions that you can do custom made, but natively, um, you know, um, if you cannot tell you, take your tail log backup, uh, you might lose some transaction. And uh, bulk log, uh, this, normally, we don't use it most of the time, but uh, this is an option. Uh, there are some operations that can be bulk log uh, that uh, uh, make the operations faster, like you know, uh, bulk insert, select, select into. Uh, so those time you can switch between bulk log and full. Uh, there's the major misconception that your log files are as the size will get smaller, uh, but that is not true. But I'm not going to go into details into that. Uh, one of the caveat in the bulk log uh, recovery model that uh, you cannot take the tail log backup if you are in the bulk log mode. So you have to understand during the bulk log uh, period, uh, if something wrong with your database, you want to take a tail log backup, you won't be able to. So that means you cannot go into point in time, uh, you know, um, restore for the period of the bulk log recovery model. Uh, just you know, because your transaction log in those time doesn't have all the details to reset you to a point in time. So that's the disadvantage. So before you switch back and forth, uh, you should understand that and you should make sure the business owners also are on the same page as you. Uh, I did uh, list some of the backup types. I know full and differential we talked about, transaction log and tail log backup. There are some backups that I'll demo you today because talking about this probably wouldn't you know, make much sense. Once you see it in action, uh, probably will be helpful. Um, so there's something called file backup. You can also do full differential. Uh, there's something called partial backup, and there is a difference between file backup and partial backup, which I'll we'll talk about. And there's something called copy only backup. Uh, I do not have a demo for copy only backup. Uh, you can take it on full and transaction log. So if you need a backup that you do not want to interrupt your uh, backup chain um, or your recovery strategy that you already prepared, uh, you do not want something else coming in between, and then your pre, -pre you know your pre prepared script will not work for re uh, for restore. Uh, those are the times that you can take a copy only backup. If you want to know how much will your size be uh, for a full and differential, I put some uh, code and some links. Uh, you can use those. The differential one is written by Paul Randall. It actually looks at the differential bitmap, and then it estimates how big is your differential 
uh, backup will be, right? And some people use this as a logic uh, and dynamically decide if I should take a differential backup or I should just take a full backup. Um, you can use this as a if else statement if you want to. Uh, how can you check for media errors in your backup? So there is there are some options like checksum. Uh, I put a link here. You can uh, you know read more about this so you don't have time to um, you know to show all that. So that's all I have for talking. Uh, I'm going to go into demo. Uh, anybody ha has any questions or comments before I go to the demo? No, there are no uh, questions at this time. Yeah, okay. uh, I recommend everyone, please use the chat freely, ask questions and discussion as well. Yes. Okay, so I'll move on. Uh, as you can see here, I actually have eight demos, so we might not get to all, but I'll uh, share the scripts. But before I go to anyone, I'm going to go to the snapshot backup of SQL 2022. And I do not want to share this code um, after I'm done, and I'll tell you why. Um, if you go to this URL, which I'll show you, this is the Microsoft Learn page, talking about 2022 snapshot backup. There's a video also. Unfortunately, in this video, they used to CMD file, and um, those files are not shared with the community. Uh, I did reach out to Anna and to Perry, to uh, you know, grab hold of those files, uh, so people can uh, and make it public, so people can test. Um, other option was to go to this PowerShell script, which I went, and I'll tell you, I spent probably about twenty hours to prepare this for this demo. Uh, this PowerShell script will be very hard for anyone to download and work as is. There's so many caveats, so many things didn't work, and you have to work through. So. Um, that's why I think I want to go back to the writer of this script and try to fix it in the in here, and then maybe I can share the code. But uh, you know, let's let's try to you know go through this uh, what I prepared. So I'm going to show this one first, then I'll go through the other um, uh, you know other other demos. So what I did here, and I did this before you all of you came online, and uh, just to save us some time. Uh, so I created a virtual machine. I'm running SQL Server on top of this, and I have two disks, one data disk, one log disk, right? And I have some, you know, some network resources. And please stop me if you have any question. I'm going too fast. So I'm connected to that Azure VM, right? And I'm going to create a empty database called Future Data Driven Demo. Set it to recovery model. I'm going to create a table and just in some two rows, simple. Now, with the snapshot backup, you know, historically people have been using VSS Writer and third-party tools like, you know, mostly storage vendors, I'm not gonna name anyone. They had their own solutions to uh, take a storage level snapshot that you can attach it to a different environment to mostly, you know, for non prod um, uh, refreshes and for other reasons, right? And why would people do that? Right? As databases are growing bigger and bigger, uh, it becomes very difficult to, you know, take backup uh, and then take differentials and then restore it, right? Uh, it takes a lot of time, a lot of, you know, uh, resource intensive. So Microsoft finally decided to come up with a native solution that is not proportional to database size. So you can pretty much uh, back up within seconds, a snapshot backup, and you can attach the snapshot uh, drives, and then you can restore within seconds, right? So make copies of the database. So that's kind of the premises of this. Less reliable, uh, less reliance on the third party vendors. One thing is you have to do, you have to suspend the database for the snapshot backup. Uh, you know, to, to make sure that your snapshots are consistent, right? Um, um, so when you bring it up, uh, uh, it is not any state that, you know, that you cannot read from there. So once we do that, you can see that IO is frozen and suspended. 
Then what you're going to do, you're going to take a disk snapshot using a PowerShell. Now the caveat here, what you know, I have challenged here is if I use the AZ module for snapshot, I could not get that work. There are some blog posts by you know data professionals, MVPs, uh, that will show you how to take snapshot using AZ module. Uh, but then when I try to mount it, it didn't work for me. And in those blog posts, they only show how to take snapshots, which I could, and I can share those codes with you if you're interested, but uh, the mounting doesn't work if you take it that way. So finally, I figured out it will work with the AZ CLI. The problem again is within the same session, if you log in with AZ uh, CLI and also do the uh, AZ connect, there's a conflict. Uh, yes. The text is really small. I don't think that anyone can read it. How about now? Great. Okay, thanks. thanks. So the challenge I came that some stuff I still need to use as a module, but for the snapshot create, I have to use as a CLI command. And within the same session, I cannot log in for both, you know, and I could not figure out. So, uh, you know, I, I ran into those issues. So anyway, so here, pretty simple. I declare a lot of variables, which I'm not going to use all. And then I import uh, these modules, which I also don't need here, but I need for the other sessions. And then I log in into for AZ CLI, set my subscription now. I'm taking a snapshot uh, and I'm passing my disk ID. Where do I get this ID from? And I know I can take this programmatically, but uh, you know, I ran into so many issues that I didn't want to take a chance. So if you go to your data disk, go to properties, this is your resource ID. So I kind of hard coded this. Uh, that's why I said, you know, I, I'm really not comfortable sharing this code at this point. I think I need to automate a lot of stuff uh, so people can you know, use this. So let's try this now. Good, good sign. We'll go to the portal, see what happened. And you stop me, please, if you have questions. Because I've done this at least 10 times in the last few days to, to show you. OK, take some time to show up here. Yep, you see now there's one snapshot. Let me. Start this year. Two snapshots, right? Data this snapshot, log this snapshot. So you go back here. Now I have to record a database backup point, and this is really not a backup, it's just a metadata only. We need that. So I'm going to delete that if that file already exists from my test. I'm going to hear this. And this also suspended the lock. And now once you take this, you can actually run restore header only file list only like other backups. And you can see what's in that .bcam file. Um, Right? Like any other backup file. It also keeps track of the files in the database. Right in any backup, we can run this. And I think once you take this, it automatically unsuspend, but Microsoft recommend we run this. So I'm just going to run it again. It's not suspended. Okay. Good. Now I'm going to go and mount the snapshots to this VM again. Or you can take this and mount it to a 
different machine to your non prod environment, to your uh, reporting purpose, read only traffic, or whatever. And even though, so I'm just going to use the VM itself here. And here, I'm actually now back to the AZ module. So here I said, you know, connect AZ account and I put my subscription ID. So hopefully I'm still logged in. And what I'm doing here, I'm just giving a new name that what name I want the disk. I'm grabbing those snapshots and I'm creating a new disk and attaching it to the VM. So let's try first data disk, see what happened. Good. I was really nervous about this demo because it took me, and I'll probably block with everything so people can use it because the way it is right now in the documentation is hard. So we're going to attach the log file and then I'll show you in the portal what I'm talking about. Great. Let's minimize this. We have to come back there. So we did mount the snapshots, right, as a new disk. So if we go to portal, We'll see it here, but let's go to the VM. Disk. Since so I had two disks initially, right? Log and data. And now I attach the other two, the snapshot disks. And what I have to do now, if I go to the VM. You see, it attached this four and five. I'm going to bring them online. And I know I can do this programmatically. That's what I'm going to do. I need to put everything together in one or two files so people can just take it and use it. Now it's here. And if we just, you know, uh, look here. We'll see extra two volumes. Now I can restore with a different name, but pointing to the new drives. And this will be instantaneous operation. Doesn't matter how big your database. Or you can drop the existing one and restore it the same name. You have both options. So imagine like this is another instance. And and then you have to clean up, you know, detach it from the VM, delete, and all that. Any question? There are no questions, uh, but I have a small comment uh, to add. Uh, SQL Server have a service that called SQL Server Writer. Yep. Now, if you are using this uh, type of backup, you actually use behind the skin uh, what is called the volume shadow copy. In order to this to work good, you should make sure that the writer is the service of the SQL uh, writer is up and running. Very valid. Thank you. I should probably put that in a comment as a pre-check before I do this, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, anybody you else? Forget it because by default, it, uh, in the Azure, it's working. Uh, there are uh, several settings in uh, uh, on premise which make it uh, run by default. For example, if you are using uh, SQL Express, then it is working by default. 
but if you are using a SQL Server Enterprise standard, it is not working by default on planets. Valid point, valid point. Anybody else has any other question? Comments? Okay, then I'll move on. But I'll definitely give some feedback to, you know, to the, to the Lion website because uh, it is definitely not usable the way it is there right now. Okay. Uh, so let's go through, I know, like I said, I have eight. If I cannot go through all, but I'll share all this. Uh, I'll put this in my GitHub repo. You can download and and uh, and practice it and then let me know, you know, give me feedback. As I said, I'm testing everything in 2022, CU7. Uh, so before I go, one thing I want to show you. So let me disconnect on this. Uh, this is just a regular uh, developer edition SQL Server. Uh, 2022 CU7 running in my laptop that I'm using for this presentation. There are some default settings, uh, which I'll also show you how to use this in the T-SQL code. Uh, so if you have this set up here, you do not have to mention this every time you backup, right? Doesn't matter what kind of backup. These settings will be in effect. One is your retention days, whether you want a compression and you want to use the backup checksum. Uh, the reason it's called backup checksum because there are other checksums that you can use in your database. I'm not going to get there for the interest of time. So these three settings is here. You can set it up from here, or you can also use, you can check this in your uh, sys configuration. Uh, you know, you can look for those values. And you can change it. Right? I put the code here for all three. So we're just going to change it. So now it's a setting change uh, across the board at an instance level. Compression, checksum, and retention. Uh, the way I wrote this demo, I also wanted to break a few myths about backups when I show you all this, uh, because I'm sure most of you probably just know how to you know, run a full backup. Differential backups uh, probably won't be that interesting. So I try to put some twist into this. I'm backing up everything into this. So every time I run this, because I've been testing for a few days, so I'm just going to delete anything is there. Uh, we're going to create, an, and you can run this over and over. Though That's the way I wrote this script. Creating a simple database, setting into full recovery, creating a table, and creating a store procedure. So this is pretty much prepping for the demo. I put enough comment; you should be able to, you know, read and follow up. Now, as I said, right, you don't need this if you already set it up. I I still put this here in case you know if you did not set this up. Now, if you just take a full backup. And we can use this to command. We can see this. Now, do you know what will happen if I run this again? What is going to happen to the backup we just took? You can put in the chat, or if you can take it off your mic, you can speak. So we were shy. So I'm just going to run this again and I'll show you. No error, nothing, right? We have both backups in the same file. This is a position that we can use if we want to restore. If you want to overwrite, this is your switch, right? So now if I am using the same name, as you can see here, if I run this again with init, it will overwrite whatever is in there. And now we just get one cell. I talked about, you know, there's a setting called expired date. 
Does anyone know what does expanded do? I have it in the comment if you haven't read it already. What does this expired day does? So let's try this. I put a October 1st, which is tomorrow. Took a backup. I still have an init switch. I run this again. I'm going to get an error message. Because I want to protect this from overwrite till October 1st midnight. If I run this without this, it's going to run fine. Oh no, it is not, sorry, because it's already, sorry, it is there. So we already set it up. Um, so you probably, you know, you have to put in a different name or something. Uh, yeah, if I delete that, so expired date doesn't prohibit you from deleting your backups. It just protects you from overwriting, just so you know, because I was able to delete it. And now if I take a backup, I can take it. So sometimes people get confused with expired date. Uh, just remember, it, it will not save you from deleting your files, just from overwriting. Okay, any question? I'm going to go a little bit fast if nobody has a question. I'm following the chat, so if there are questions, I will just uh, inform you. Awesome. OK, so let's talk about some. Differential backups. Again, same thing. I'm going to set up a few things. OK, so take close attention what I'm doing. I'm inserting five rows. This is a trick that you can do with Go5, or you can write a while statement, but I'm probably being lazy here. So you took insert five rows, taking a full backup. And I'm going to run this three times, and I'm going to take differential backup every time. Right, so we took three differential backup. So how many rows do we have now? Who is paying attention? Okay, so we have 20 rows. And if you ask this question, uh, last year I you know had to take a lot of interviews. And a lot of people got confused with the differential backup. Uh, many people answered me that if I have to recover the 20 rows, I have to restore all three differential backups. So a lot of people doesn't realize that uh, differential backups uh, are not same as transactional log backup, right? Uh, once you take the third differential backup, it has everything that is in differential one and two. Uh, I still see many, many people in the community, especially those who are new, uh, get confused with that, right? So I just wanted to make a point here that I just need the full backup, which is the five rows, and I need the last differential, which is the last 15 rows. So it is going to restore all the 20 backups. Okay, let's talk about transaction log backup a little bit. Again, another, you know, I'll talk about transaction log backup, but I'm also trying to talk about some misconceptions that people has. So just pay attention. We insert five rows, we take a full backup. We insert five rows, we take a transaction log backup. I'm taking another five rows full backup. And I'm taking another uh, 
Now, did the second backup break the transaction log chain? This is where many people get confused. If you have to recover uh, now all the 20 records, what are the files you think we need to restore? Anybody wants to show my answer? Okay, so you took a full T log, full, another T log. A lot of people think that taking a transaction, taking a full or a differential in the in between, take the transition, uh, break the transition log chain, which is not correct. I can have a full backup from a month before. If I have all the transition logs and I want to restore these thousands and thousands, I can restore uh, to the current point in time. Uh, but you know, you don't want to take that chance, right? In case if your transition log files got corrupted or damaged, plus it will be a cumbersome operation to restore thousand, thousand, right? That's why we take frequent full backup and differential backup. So in this case, you really do not need the full backup in the middle that we took. You can do the first full backup and you can restore the two transition log backups that we took, and then that should let you recover all the 20 records. I talked about a uh, tail log backup, right? So let's look at that. So I'm creating a table here. I'm not creating a store procedure like I did before. Inserting two rows. Take a full backup. Insert two rows, take a transaction log backup. And now I'm taking, inserting two more rows, which I did not backup. Right? I'm going to mimic an incident. I'm going to take the database offline. And I'm going to delete that. data file, MDF, I only have one file, one log file. I'm going to delete that totally. And if I try to now bring the database online, I cannot. Why? Because I do not have my MDF file. So you lost your storage. You got disconnected from your storage. Storage got damaged, fire, whatever. And you can also see here what's the status of the database. Recovery pending. Right? And if we check here, we can see that. Pending. So I'm not saying this you can do in every case, but in this case, because we only lost the data file, we still have our transaction log file intact. I can take a pay log backup. And as you can see, I'm using the option about no truncate. And if I try this without no truncate, what will happen? I cannot use this. Right? So let's try this. We we're able to do that. Now let's restore the whole thing. We're going to create a new database. Remember, we lost our data file, right? And what's our restore sequence? We have the full backup. 
with no recovery. We had the first transaction log when we inserted the second two records. With no recovery now, we are doing the tail log backup. And see if we got all six records. Right? If we could not take the tail log backup, we would be only able to recover four records. Right? And again, I just want to reiterate not every scenario will let you to take tail log backup. But if you, even if we lost our main our data file, MDF, primary file, we are still able to recover everything. Okay. So from here on, the last three demos, I just want to, this, you know, very rarely, if you take a survey today, even people have been working in this industry for a long, long time, very few people have used these things, right? Uh, these things are not very common. Uh, they are mostly for you know large databases where taking a regular full or differential is just not practical because of the size. Uh, so I put, you know, I did not write this from scratch from this one. Um, you know, Redgate has a, uh, a published book by Sean, uh, and the PDF version of that is free from Simple Talk and you know, Redgate together, they're partners. Uh, you can go to this URL actually, and you can just download the PDF. It's not illegal, it's free for the community. Uh, so I, I copied most of the code from there and then I modified it. If you want to read more about file backups, I also put in URL. Uh, and then I also put some best practices that Microsoft recommend, right? Before you go into the file level backups, they always recommend when you first create the database before it gets too big, uh, or at the beginning you take a full backup, so at least you have one base. In case if you run into any issues with your file uh, backups, you can go from that base and use all the transaction locks. That's recommended, but not necessary. So let's, let's look at that. And I think this will be the last one. I'm going to, probably I won't have time to use the seven and eight, but I'll share the code with everyone. Uh, these databases are not same as before. As you see, I put here, uh, you know, like more files. So I have a primary file group, I have a secondary file group, and I have a log file. Uh, and I'm doing this for demo purpose. And then I'm creating two tables. One is in primary, one is in secondary. And I'm creating one record in each. So now I have two data files. One is in primary file group, one is in secondary file group. I have two tables, one is in primary, one is in secondary, each has one record. And now I'm taking a primary file group backup. If you see here, this syntax is different. This is saying only backup the primary file group. I could also just um, use just file and just backup one file if I want to. Now I'm doing the secondary file group. And I'm doing a transaction log. I'm going to insert a second set of record in both files now. And now I, I can also do a differential on the and here you see I'm not using file group, I'm using the file name directly. So I'm just going to take a differential. And I'm going to take the time here. I can show you, you can do point in time. And I'm going to do another set of record and do another transaction log backup. To show you a point in time restart. And a last set, which is not in any backup. Right. Here I'm going to take a 
payload backup as I showed you before. So now I'm going to restore the first set with no recovery. I'm going to restore the differential. Second transaction log backup. And the tail log backup. Recover everything. And, you know, I'm not going to get there. You can also, you know, run this and you can also do point in time and it will, you know, show you all this. Uh, if I take this database offline now, And if we do the same thing that we did before, if we take the secondary by offline, uh, sorry, delete it. I should have put it. Uh, I could have done this from a XP commercial, which I turned on for the demo. I don't know why I didn't do that. File backup test user data one. Okay. So now same thing as before. And we can take a tail log backup. And the advantage right now for us, I can just restore that one file because I'm taking a file backup. I do not have to restore everything. Right? So that is the advantage. So I know it's all o'clock, so I'm going to stop here. Like I said, I'll share everything with you know with the organizers except the snapshot backup because I'm really not comfortable doing that as of now. I think I need to fancy that a little bit more uh, because uh, you know there's a lot of hardcoded things that I showed you, but I wanted to get it to work for this uh, presentation. Uh, so again, as I said, uh, if you want to, you know, ask me questions, uh, you know, the best way is to you know follow any of these four things. I'm going to put in the chat again, uh, and then I'll definitely answer your questions and comments. Ryan, back to you. I cannot hear you. You're on mute. I can see your mute sign. OK, so I, as I said, that this time we don't have questions, but it was great uh, explanation. Uh, and I'm sure that there will be a question uh, follow up this meeting. Uh, we are recording it, so it will bring uh, more uh, questions as well. Uh, I do want uh, to thank uh, you for coming today uh, and uh, thank everyone who joined us uh, today to this uh, session. Uh, I remind you, uh, follow the user group. We have a meeting uh, almost every week and don't forget to register to the future data driven summit, which we did not uh, mention that uh, Tayob will be there as well. He will speak there. So he can uh, recommend it, uh, this as well. Definitely, uh, as I said at the beginning, definitely highly recommended. I attended last year and I think the year before. Uh, so I highly recommend it. This year the speaker lineup is like an unbelievable lineup, so. I totally agree. I don't have a lot to add to this, just join us it should be a great uh, event it's virtually so you can join from everywhere wherever you are just internet laptop that's all you need uh, thanks a lot thanks a lot uh, taub uh, i will stop the recording of today
ביי ביי, אני אעבור לסטופ את המיטינג, אני אעשה את זה, אנחנו נעשה 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 את זה, אנחנו